So, after years of hard, hard negligence, finally made my final drum racks and I want to show you my thought process about them. So my very first drum racks have been these and they were just collection of sounds and I labeled them quite accurately. So I made all the bongos I wanted and I collected up to 128 samples, which is the maximum number of samples that the Ableton sampler can fit into one instance. And for like exotic drums, it makes sense because you there are so many variations that that's okay. If I have to choose a single sample, especially for kick drum or for the snare drum, which are the main sounds, you, you generally can't make a track without those sounds. I don't want to go through 128 samples. Also because uh, there's the overload choice uh, bias, which kind of makes me stop looking for samples. I just stick with the first five or 10 samples uh, I see because I just get scared at wasting time going through all those samples. Maybe I like two or three of them, maybe there are even some duplicates. And that's because when I did them like eight, seven years ago, uh, I was lazy. So at a certain point, I just like uh, typed like kick and went in my dubstep uh, or drum and bass or whatever folder and drag and dropped all the samples without going in depth with the analysis of all the samples that actually sounds good. In fact, I had a bunch of trash samples. I have this hi-hat closed acoustic, okay. And then I have this method, which basically shrinks all this selector line here at one value, the minimum value possible. And then with the sample selector, I go through all the samples. I've seen this method being like suggested by many creators, many guides, educators, whatever, but this has a bunch of problems. So let's cover them. So the first problem is that 128 samples generally are too many. It's too much uh, stuff to deal with if you want actually to go fast with sample selection and create your next track. The second problem is that when you select, you just go through like all the samples like these. You take your mouse or your trackpad or you can map it to a knob on your uh, keyboard. But when you select it, you don't really listen to the sample. You have to press the note or like have a MIDI pattern going uh, looped. Otherwise, you just don't know which samples you are using. So another problem is that the Ableton sampler doesn't kind of refresh the window when you select something new. I just move like this and we always have the C-hat 01 and it refreshes only if I actually select it. So I mean, that's not really functional. You don't have a visual feedback by the system, by the software when you're selecting something. And if you actually want to look at the waveform, so you can just make your considerations. So you can just look if there's some delay or something that's going wrong within the envelope. You, you have to kind of go like this, scroll and see, okay, this is a hat too, so I select it and then I can work on it. So those are multiple steps that create friction in your workflow. Another problem is updating these racks because if you want to add a new samples or swap a sample, whatever, um, you can create some mess with the even redistribution of the samples in this view. So that's kind of requiring all the stuff or a huge part of the, of the whole thing just because of one sample. So that's not really functional, that's not really efficient. Last but not least is that if you want to kind of take a sample from uh, anywhere else, uh, another pack, uh, another rack, uh, whatever, we just go to the hot swap sample, for example, we have uh, this uh, C1 and we just go and take this uh, S wash. Okay, here we have the S wash loaded and the C1 hat sample has been removed. And also we have what I was saying earlier, here we have the redistribution thing. So this is just at the bottom. I mean, it's not really a problem, but it doesn't look well sorted. And to some extent you are also compromising the track. It's also true that you are doing only for the session you are working in, but I mean, that looks, that feels really random. Another problem, if we look at this other rack, is that in this rack, I only have 20 kicks. And if you want to scroll through uh, different samples, you are actually like, it's taking the whole zero to 127 steps range into 20 chunks. And if you just go with the arrows or with the knob, whatever, or with the cursor, with your mouse, you don't really know when you are swapping the sample because of the, 
visual update refreshing problem I mentioned earlier. And I mean, if you just click on the arrow or whatever, you have to change the sample because you are giving an input and having it as a dead input just makes uh, all the thing kind of cloggy, clunky, it doesn't work well. There's probably one benefit from using this kind of rack and that's the random feature. In fact, I can click on the random button and I just swap samples and I can go through kind of samples randomly. That's not something I really like or need, but I mean, it's an option. Now that we've gone through all the problems, let's see how I solved this workflow issue. I basically stuck to the most simple solution. So now let's dive into it. So what I did was like for each genre, so let's go with drum and bass because it's the first folder. I made multiple subfolders, one for the claps, one for the crash, one for the close, one for the open, etc. And the difference is that in this case, I went for a maximum most of the time of 20 samples. Sometime I went overboard with 22, 25, 30, especially on the exotic drums, but generally 20 samples. So now let's see how much time it takes me to go through 20 samples with this trick. Okay, so it's around seven, eight, nine seconds. So that's an acceptable time. If I had more samples like 128, we should multiply this time by six or seven. And you also have to take into account what, that with wider choices, you take more time. You take exponentially more time because you have more stuff to compare and you just lose too much time on meaningless nuances. And once I did this, I just loaded the first sample of or whatever sample of each folder into the drum rack. So here I have the kick, the snare, soft snare, clap, and uh, going to the crash and the snap. And whenever I want to change, let's say the kick drum, I just go like this, the odd swap, and I pick whatever I like, just hit enter, it changes, the whole view has been updated, and that's it. So now let's discuss a bunch of things that you don't have to do when doing this kind of sorting. So you can do it in the fastest way possible. And that's because I didn't do it and I learned it the hard way. So create a new project for a single genre. So make drum rack slash drum and bass and save it and use that project only for drum and bass samples. Then create a rack. And when you're creating your rack, you just want to create all the buttons, all the drum types that you want to go through as a kind of reminder of all the kind of drums you have to filter. Then whatever sample you find, just drop it here in the zone section and finish the whole stuff. And so it's a bit clunky with next step, but now let's see. Once you collected all your drums and you have for each sampler something like this, uh, you just save the whole project with collect all and save and it will create a sample folder with recorded and imported. And from there you can most of the time just use a finder. So you can use the finder and you go into your project, you go into samples, you go into imported, and here you should have all the samples, whatever drum type loaded here. And you can just click on the spotlight, you write kick and Hopefully you just have to click here into imported and not this Mac. So it just filters out all the samples with kick in the your name or whatever other name uh, you are looking for in the imported folder. And if all your kick samples have kick in the name, and I'm saying this because maybe it has bass drum or doesn't have it. It's like KCK because it's cool to name it like that. You just select them all and kind of move them to a hierarchy like this one. So you create your house and garage folder with all the subfolders and you move all the samples, all the kick samples to kick and you rinse and repeat with all the other drums. So that's it. So if you produce only one genre or two genres, you should be good to go within one day. That's absolutely doable uh, in a shorter time span. And if you have um, fewer samples, you have uh, fewer stuff to go through to select, uh, and you can also choose to go up to 15 or 10 samples, whatever, just do whatever you want. Um, so one thing I want to stress when making this kind of rack is sorting all the drum types by, by feature. So if you go like uh, here, clap, I have the clap, standard clap, then I have a clap big. Then I have clap tight. Because, so I have a, a quite wide, but not too much choice for 
each kind of sample. So I don't have like 20 samples and within those 20 samples, they are already kind of squeezed within the normal clap, the big clap and the tight clap, I, because that will means sticking to very few samples if your goal is to do some sort of layering change not much but often enough between all the samples you have and not have like a stale sounding signature sound so just do this i have like a snare then i have snare big and then i have snare soft so all those kind of nuances which are also all kind of drums that you can use within the same drum kit maybe the bounce snares for hip hop so you have the main snare and then the bounce snare that are on the off beat so you want different samples you can't or it doesn't sound that great doing it all with the same sample with different velocities i mean it's up to you so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one